Snowden development collapses. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. The construction apocalypse is continuing. It looks like Snowden developments in Victoria has, well, finally collapsed. They've called in the administrators. This is an article written by Alex Turner-Cohen. Before we go through this, let's jump over to the other screen and look at the Wayback Machine now. I had to go back a while because this is their website now and it seems to have been like this for most of the year. I don't know what that... If we can read anything from that, but I mean, here we go. Let's have a look. So there, they appear to be a house builder. This is from 2020. Come on, you can work. I mean, there you go. So, oh, spec home builder, everyone. We can see here, you know, nothing, nothing wrong with these things. Perfectly fine. They all look the same. They're built with the same materials. I'm kind of frustrated what they cost to build when you see the cost of some of the materials and how much of them is styrofoam but well, not styrofoam but similar similar feeling products but there it is perfectly fine standard spec homes so it's not surprising that they're in trouble it's the home builders that we really seem to see are falling over with this construction apocalypse and remember remember everyone Our good old government came to the rescue. They kept the zombies alive, guys. They inflated the housing market, particularly with with Home Builder. Now you've got the housing grants. You've got, what is it, equity equity ownership or what was it? Oh, equity. Shared equity. Shared, Shared, bloody hell. People voted for this. The government coming in and helping people buy parts of their houses. That's what they voted for in Australia. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, well, that, that, maybe that can evolve in a mortgage keeper. You know, people are getting behind on the mortgage. Don't worry. Albo will buy a part of your house off you. I, I, I really, I hope that doesn't happen. That, that's a joke. Okay, that's not a prediction. That's not me saying it'll happen. That's a joke. I don't want that to happen. That, that terrifies me. But I can see Australians voting for it and lapping that shit up, can't you? I, I really can. Oh, boy. An embattled Victorian building firm has gone into voluntary administration. News.com.au understands. Snowden Developments held a crisis meeting at 9 a.m. on Friday where staff were informed they were being let go because the company had appointed administrators. The meeting went for an hour, finishing around 10 a.m., and when employees left, they were visibly upset. Staff have been told to hand in their stuff, an insider told News.com.au. With laptops, phones, and other company items needing to be returned in the next few days. It is understood the company's owners had the option to stand down or be terminated, and they chose the latter. They also attended a meeting on Thursday with the Department of Treasury to see if a government bailout was a possibility. News.com.au understands. There you go. I mean, here's the thing, guys. In, well, the construction industry is going to be in a recession. We're in a profitless boom fueled by government intervention. It, it's sad. People are going to lose businesses. People are going to lose their jobs. And often through no fault of their own. There's nothing a lot of them could have done. The writing probably was on the wall back when you had trading while insolvent. Rules change. And it's just snowballed from there. Staff are owed about three weeks worth of pay, which was meant to be paid on Monday. Although they were given a pay slip, no money was deposited. When news that comes out of you tried to contact Snowden, their office number went to an automated message uh, message advising the caller to ring back during business hours, even though it was 10.45 on Friday. News.com has contacted Snowden's director, Kiss, uh, Chris Sander, but he did not immediately return our request for comment. It comes just a week after news.com.au raised concerns about Snowden development. When investigations revealed staff had not been paid superannuation for months, creditors were owed millions of dollars, and customers' builds had stalled. More than 200 homes were in the pipeline to be built. Ah, uh, this... Yep. It, the meeting was emotional. The owners were there as well, the insider said. Staff left the termination meeting at Snowden's Killor Park offices, and several angry tradies were waiting outside demanding their money. Yeah, the tradies aren't going to get paid. They're... Here's the thing, how much will they get? If there's no money left, there's no assets left, how much are the, li- are the administrators going to take? Are they going to try and restart the company? 
or they're just going to liquidate it. They'll be receiving an email late on Friday afternoon with an official termination notice and with details of the administrators who had been appointed, it's understood. 15 creditors took legal action against Snowden Development in April, with their debts totaling $2.5 million. They demanded the Supreme Court of Victoria impose a winding-up order to force the company to go into liquidation on the grounds of insolvency. The biggest debt was $936,000. Oh. It's understood some of that was paid off, and Snowden was planning to sell a property on July 4 to cover the rest of their debts. However, the company went under before the property sale was able to settle. After news that Comdotu broke the story last week, other creditors came forward, with one man claiming he was owed as much as 480 grand. Another person, um, news that Comdotu knows, is owed around 600,000. Staff have also been beset for months as they cop abuse from unpaid contractors and frustrated customers, while also receiving no superannuation payments from their employer. Since October, superannuation has not been paid, leading to more than 50% of staff quitting between then and now. Well... That's, that's what happens when a company gets desperate. They've got some money sitting aside for the quarterly payments of superannuation. They don't pay it. Or the monthly payments, they don't pay it. Because, you know, they're hoping, desperately hoping, they can keep the ship moving when everything's collapsing. I mean, there's no winners in this situation. You've got to remember, guys, Victoria was one of the lockiest down states as well. And that, even though the construction industry could still kick on, they had strict numbers of people that could work on the sites. That slowed down a lot of projects. And you combine that with, with the supply chain issues. Snowden Development used to have 70 staff, but only around 30 were left to attend the crisis meeting. Now, see, that's an interesting thing to track a company. I'm going to have to add that to my, uh, my builder checks. Looking at LinkedIn. I used to be. I used to have like the pro version of LinkedIn, a professional one. Back years ago, I got it dirt cheap, and I just kept it. I got rid of it because it was a, a subscription. You know, and when I was um, saving money, I purged everything, and I, I kind of regret it now because it was you can't get that access to that for less than like five hundred dollars. But I wonder if you can see staff changes in companies. I know you used to be able to, and see like you know if there's a huge fall off in a company, that could be an early sign. Logan has worked at the company for a number of years. Said staff learnt several months ago they were not receiving the money supposed to be going in their super. Although it appeared super was being deposited according to their pay slips, one staff member went in their super funds and realised no money was being put in there. Then they alerted the others. Well, yeah, that's, that's why you need to check your super, guys. Then we asked company and it was confirmed no super was being paid. And then nothing much has been said about it since. Yeah, that should be writing on the wall. Snowden staff are beset by problems on all sides, according to Logan. With his colleagues being accosted by angry creditors or customers, yeah, you'd, you'd hate to be in the situation where you're a staff member, you're a worker bee, you've got no say over, you're not even getting all your pay, and tradies are screaming at you, and they're not going to be civil. I mean, if you're owed a, a truckload of money, you're going to be blunt. you know. And as well-behaved and, and mild-mannered, as tradies are, you know, they may, may go slightly over the edge. I had one trading mate who wasn't paid uh, by a particular vehicle company and he smashed all the windows in the yard. Don't do that, kids. I wouldn't encourage that. Lucky he didn't get arrested. Anyway, we get trucks parked in the car park blocking our car so we can't go out because the tradies haven't been paid. The source told news that com.au that some staff were not answering phone calls from unknown numbers for fear of frustrated clients or supplies being on the other end. Well, I don't answer calls from unknown numbers now because I get bloody bots calling me all the time. Apparently, my Amazon Prime, which I don't have, is being renewed. The MBN wants to contact me. The ATR. There's just so many bloody scams. It's just getting insane. Michael Hassan's company, MD Demolitions, was one of the 15 creditors taking Snowden to the Supreme Court after waiting more than a year for 103 grand. Ah, oh. Mr. Hassan, with three kids to support, as well as 30 staff who work for him, had visited Snowden's Keller Park office six times to get the money. See, this is the thing. When you've got a team, 100 grand, that's going to hurt you even more. There was no money coming into the account to feed the family or pay off the workers, he told News.com. 
It's just sad. I've been to the office. I said, I'm desperate. I need the money. If I didn't have financial support behind me, the bank would have taken my property by now. That's the, that's the issue with being a business owner. That, that's why I was so bloody pissed off with the trading while insolvency thing. Because I've been in that situation, guys. Have you know huge amounts of money outstanding and people just dragging the chain, dragging the chain, not paying, paying late. And you've you know, um, Nick Milalovic, sixty-seven. Ah, oh, this guy contracted for Snowden through his big la- brick lane business for twenty-two years and claimed he's owed four hundred eighty grand from work done all the way back to twenty nineteen. Well. You've got to know. You've got to stop. That's the thing. You've got to stop. But I guess you know he's been working with him for two decades, so we trust him. Can you blame him? He's been working with him since he was forty-five. I'm financially ruined. He said, "I'm sixty-seven years of age, and I've got to keep working." Yeah, that, that's his retirement money there, half a mil. I came back to bricklaying. I've got to make money, all my debts to pay. Ah, oh, bugger. I mean, that's the thing. You don't with a tradie. It wears you out, okay? 67 laying bricks. Mate, go, um, get a job estimating somewhere. You, you, be able to, you should be able to do that as a brickie. More than two dozen customers that news that come to you have been, have been waiting for months and in some cases years for their homes to be built. Customers are uncertain what that means for them and the money they've already given to Snowden Developments in progress payments. Hopefully they haven't overpaid Snowden so they should have enough money to go to another builder. One Melbourne customer, uh, Suba, Mittal 40, has missed out on the 25 government grant because his site remained untouched for more than 18 months. Ah, yeah, the, I mean, we heard about this guy. He's, he's bar- building too close to the edge. He's building too close to the edge, mate. You've got to just forget about the grant and go own a builder. But then you, you can't go own a builder unless you have all the money. No bank's going to lend you money to do own a builder, are they? Rebecca Cook, a high school science teacher, is concerned as her home is partially built, making it harder to build, to bring a new builder on board. Or you could, I guess you could go own a builder, and, no, but the banks wouldn't let you do it, would they? This is the thing. Here in Australia now, it used to be back, I've got an old book here, red old book, Building Your Own Home, you know, where people would build a little tiny one or two bed, tiny house on their huge block, their quarter acre block, and then you'd extend it as you need to. As you you know, you grow in your family. We don't do that anymore, do we? I want them to finish my house, so it's not happening. The prices have skyrocketed. I don't have the funds to fork out another fifty grand for the build. Some customers are re- relieved the company has officially gone under and are hoping it eventually gets to a liquidation stage, as they will finally have some certainty after so long having calls gone answered. Yeah, that's it. If only the mascot towers lot could have that. That uh, certainly. Mira Voss, who has spent more than 30 grand on progress payments so far, has told news that the use Snowden going into liquidation would mean that we are able to move on from them because we'll be able to claim from the insurance and work with another builder. If they liquidate and we can finally get something done, she told news.com.au. Greg added, they may actually give us an opportunity to actually get accurate information and work constructively towards a real solution. Snowden has been vague and evasive and constantly giving excuses. At least now we have a chance to communicate. Yeah, so it sounds like this has been, well, frustrating a lot of people for some time. Let's have a talk about this one. Well, another, another builder has gone under, guys, as the construction apocalypse continues. What do you do? Uh, I've, got an, I've got another article for another builder in trouble as well. Another two. I'm actually thinking of mapping them all out. Uh, I'll look at the the fin- um, financial regulator data, um, but we'll see. Okay, I can tell you, we're going to see a huge surge up in insolvencies. But I'll look to uh, to map out where it's happening. It's not just builders, it's also subbies. And you won't see it in the news. You'll see it in the insolvency notices. Yeah. Guys, this is, this is what happens. This is what happens when they juice up the housing sector and it all just goes nuts. Tradies are screwed. Business owners are screwed. Buyers are screwed. The, the one guy there who's building, building, and he's desperately needing the 25 grand to even get 
close to doing it. He was not ready to build. You need a contingency sum on top of what you've got for construction. But this is the Australian way. Anyway, tell me your thoughts about this one, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe to the channel. If you want to support us, there are a few ways you can. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon. Use our referral links from Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, Aussie Broadband, or buy our pocket squares. If you need an architect, give us a call and take care. Oh, boy. It's going to be an interesting couple of years, guys.